You're listening to Tori Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. Have you noticed that in your relationship, no matter what you're fighting about, it seems somehow to be the same fight? And then there's the language, swapping out the four-letter word vocabulary for the four-year-old's vocabulary. I'm recording in my pajamas today. So am I. It's pajama day <laughs> on the podcast. Podcast pajama day. Listen in your pajamas. So let's make thir- every Thursday pajama day or whatever uh, it is today. I don't think I have enough pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a washing machine? I do, but when you were an empty nester, all of the years where you ended up doing washing all the time because people were bringing in their sports clothes and all that crap all the time, all of a sudden it's just you. And you're like, can I, this is a conversation I never thought I'd have with myself. Do I have enough clothes that I can run a full washing machine? (laughs) Unfortunately, my husband is a carpenter. So by the end of the week, his clothes are piled to the ceiling Mm -hmm. because they're nasty. Mm -hmm. So it's like living with a teenager in that regard. Well, in many regards. And he always says, I'll do my own laundry. And. But I always do it first because I just hate seeing crap lay around. Oh, speaking of hating seeing crap laying around, there was a big fight here yesterday. Ooh. Yeah, because of the foster. Well, the foster dog was the fuse. The foster foster dog was neutered this week. And this fossil unit is a big exerciser. He doesn't go to the gym. He just moves all the time. If he doesn't move all the time, he gets twitchy. Uh, his, <laughs> his mother was like this. So this is, and also he doesn't, he's a very sympathetic person, but he's not a very empathetic person. This is the reason why he took our firstborn at the age of four days in San Francisco in the chill of fog and said, I'm going to take him out in the jogging stroller. And the kid was wearing like a tiny little t-shirt and it was 50 <laughs> degrees out. And I just looked at him and said at that time, are you completely bonkety bonkers? You, the kid was inside my body three days ago at 98.7 degrees. <laughs> and now he's going out there. in the fog. If you want him to, yeah. So bundle him the bleep up before you walk out the door. So this is the same mindset that when, when he tells me that he's parked two blocks away, I quadruple it. It, it doesn't yeah. <laughs> matter what the exercise involved, the exertion will be, the inconvenience or the, the trauma to your body will be. To him, it's nothing because he's delighted if digits of his are dangling by a sinew. And he can't quite understand that the rest of the world may not feel this way. So back to the dog. The yeah. post-operative instructions. Better lay around. Right. Which the spousal the rest. unit cannot, cannot fathom. So his version, unbeknownst to me, of having the foster dog lie around and, and heal was to just take him on a three-mile walk. Oh. I know. Oh, that poor puppy. Yeah, the poor puppy came back in, in not such... I mean, and the awful part is he means well. Like, he completely... Yeah. To him, that's nothing. To him, a seven-mile walk is just kind of a, a, a an average stroll. So, and I'm saying, just just take him out for a pee. Do not, do not. Well, it takes a little while to pee. I said, well, then you stand there. You don't, you don't. <laughs> yeah. So uh-huh. this was where it began. And it escalated. I take them walking all the time. And, and somewhere in there, I'd had enough of being told about his travails, taking the dogs walking all the time. When in point of fact, they don't need to be walking all the he needs to be walking all the time in point of fact they should not be walking all the time right now one yes one no so i i i I had enough i just had enough and when the poor dog in its miserable cone was smashing into things and completely distraught at the idea of going out with the other dog probably because it knew it was going to go on some kind of forced march which is i mean I'm going to digress again. (laughs) The forced marches of the spousal unit are legendary in my mind. I remember resorting to the language of a five-year-old in Amsterdam. 
I had been forced marching for two days. And I said, you know, those little river cruises for tourists, those look like so much fun and so relaxing. And he said, but we can walk along the river. And, no. and the little switch flipped over. And and I did I did the six year old thing. I said, You can't make me. <laughs> and then I, I said, said, So am I, but what are you the other day? Did you really? You said so yes. am I, but what are you? <laughs> yeah. Is this what our middle age is supposed to be? <laughs> I know. I know. And I also said I'm rubber, you're glue. You said that to me. Oh. What, what when what was the what was the uh um impetus for um uh, so are you or whatever it was i don't know i told him he's not the boss of me oh that's another good one <laughs> yeah, yeah so yeah and it, and it yes it started with a really dumb little argument yeah you and, can't make me that was and then i got on the boat and i said i'm taking this little <laughs> stupid bad wine and cheese river boat tourist cruise and you can come or not that's yeah. up to you. So I'm so happy my husband is takes the least path of resistance like I do. Oh no, not this one. This one's like yeah. why take the elevator if there are fifty flights of great stairs that you could climb? So yeah. yeah. So where was I? Oh, the, the oh, foster the dog. dog. So they of course the poor dog in a cone and my, our our dog get into it in the vestibule and I lose my mind. And I, I begin using the F word loudly. But, of course, I go to the second floor because we have tenants in the in the garden apartment below you the first floor. You don't want them to hear. No, I don't want to, them to hear. And I make sure the windows are closed because I'm very, very loud. And I unpack the gunny sack of crap that I do around the house that he doesn't even notice because he's telling me how much energy he spends walking these dogs. And I'm very graphic in my description. Of the things that I'm doing around the house that I am I shower at the pool and yet I am scrubbing his hair out of the bathtub and a two inch glob of toothpaste from the base of the electric toothbrush and I'm sure he doesn't notice that after he cooked a beautiful dinner the other night there were oil and crumbs stuck to the top of the stove which we would have he would have gladly left there as some kind of indoor bird feeder until I saw fit to remove it and somewhere along the line I realized that I'd completely lost my mind and 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 I said then I stopped talking and went to the pool. That's <laughs> well. That's a good thing. I stopped talking and I went to the pool. And I I'm still not completely calm, but the poor little foster dog was so worn out and and it didn't go well. And we had to call the vet and and he was a complicated case. It's not just men who have undescended testicles. Dogs too, and, and cats. And we had a cat Cheeto, our cat that we had for. Many, many years, couldn't figure out after he was fixed why he kept humping everything around. Ah. And uh, it turns out that he had an undescended testicle. Well, what the hell kind of vet can't count to two? I have no idea. He was a rescue. Well, as usual, my life is chaos. Oh, okay. Every day my life is chaos. Okay. So, Josh, Eve's baby daddy boyfriend fiance whatever yeah was sick all last week baby got sick eve is now sick baby has croup oh that's no fun and i tell eve what she needs to do uh oh and the response was don't tell me how to be a mom oh because she's been a mom for all of what 8 months now maybe no he's just turning six months in a couple weeks. Great. Six months of experience against four kids raised to adulthood. Yeah, that's a good formula. I'm, well, it, yeah, I, I did course. try to get in there that all my kids lived through childhood. Oh, them's fighting words there. How did that go over? Oh, she's pissed. But she also wants me to take care of him so she can sleep. So uh, I kind of have the upper hand right now. Oh, yeah. And yes, I went to the Mayo Clinic website and showed her what they said about croup. What did they say about and croup? That from six months to three years, they get it. And it used to be to stick them in a, you know, sauna room, turn your shower on, make it hot. Well, now they say cool mist humidifier. Okay. 
So I gave her my cold humidifier and said, put him in his bedroom with this. And she said, well, he doesn't sleep in his bed when he's sick. I'm like, well, a, how long has he been in a bed at all? And B, what does she know about him being sick? I know. And yesterday, I have to tell you, she took her rabbit to the vet because he had two bumps on either side of his nose, which turned out to be little hairballs. It was nothing. So she went all the way to Flagstaff, paid $75 to find out that nothing's wrong with the rabbit. And so now she's going to do the same thing with this croupy baby. And she has diaper on wrong, too. She always puts his diaper on wrong. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. There are so many ways I'm visualizing <laughs> diaper on wrong. Let me let me first ask, is it covering his bottom and genitals? Um, It covers his genitals, but it doesn't. It's not around his legs properly. So stuff squirts out. Lovely. That's great. Yeah. Well, well, who's changing the diaper, her or you? Well, I'm trying to take him to change his diapers because she, uh, I'm not allowed to tell her how to be a mom. So obviously she doesn't know how to put on a diaper. Well, when she's tired of excrement squirting out the side of the baby's diapers, perhaps either that or the kid will eventually be toilet trained. That's I would just tell myself, look, That's eventually this kid will be toilet trained. And it just, this is information that doesn't necessarily matter in the long run. Well, I'm taking it off. That's what I do. As soon as he comes over, I take it off and reassemble it. Yeah, that sounds a lot less risky. Yes. So I am reading that you guys are having some kind of record-breaking monsoon season. Frankie ordered the mini split air conditioning heating unit last night, and his payment was rejected by Chase. What? Because they thought it might be fraud. So when he ordered it, it didn't go through. And then we had to go through this whole rigmarole of, uh, you know, is this you? Is this him? Is this who? Blah, blah, blah. Because we had the money in our account. We had more than that. And uh, yeah, he was very annoyed. But yes, it finally went through. I have all the dogs in here with me right now, except for the bulldog who's with Eve and the baby, because it's so freaking hot out. Like, no one wants to go outside. And I'm going to have to get my dogs a little boots if this doesn't, like, break soon. And I know none of them will wear them. Is it because it fries their little feet? <laughs> yeah. What, you what, you what can't people, even walk them on pavement. What do people do down you know, in the valley when it's this hot? What are the... They put little socks and boots on. Or they have, um, they put down pee pads and their animals don't go outside. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's. They burn their feet, and it's, what, 112 down there, 96 up here, and the police will stop people walking their dogs downtown on the concrete huh. and say, you can't do that. Huh. Wow. I'm now imagining a whole city full of dogs walking with little booties on. But, yeah, that the heat is pretty, pretty bad this year, but we're having a good monsoon, and now we have our air conditioner unit ordered ordered and frankie will put it in you're gonna yeah. put this mini split you're gonna have to to cut a hole in the side of your house right because it's a log house i don't think so i don't know he knows how to do it making a hole in the side of your house freaks me out even when it's the cable person like drilling a hole i don't like <laughs> to think of my house as permeable i know that's ridiculous I know that you, you can make a hole in the side of a house. It's not hard. And yet somehow seeing how easy it is for the cable guy to make a hole in the side yeah. of your house makes me very upset. I just well, I don't know. I guess I'm used to tools. I don't know. But uh, my husband's a master carpenter, remember? I, I do so know. It there has is... nothing to do with if... logic. Nothing to do with logic. Yeah. Just like this podcast. Yeah, you know that? that's true. Yeah. That's true. Thanks for listening to the Tory Writers She Said What podcast. Since you've made it to the end, you might want to know that my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air, is not only available in print, but now also in complete audiobook form, narrated by me and available on Audible. 